many of you know, I love team sports, but I also used to ref basketball. And I often think about the best basketball referees and the best principals and the thing that they have in common is that when they're really, really good, you don't tend to notice them. But if they struggle, you notice them quite often. And it doesn't mean that you don't step in, you don't kind of help the flow of the game sometimes. But if you notice that referee, if you notice that principal, if you notice that superintendent over and over again, they're probably doing too much. And they're probably not letting the people that they're there to serve actually be successful. That's something that I've thought about a lot over the years. How do we put people in a position where they bring their talents, they bring their abilities? And often that means the leaders put people in a position and then they step back. You don't really notice them. I thought about this a lot when talking to Dr. Keith Simmons. He is a superintendent in Griffin Spalding County Schools. And I was so blessed to be able to do the opening keynote for their event this past summer. And just an absolute wonderful district. And he talked a lot about this experience and really how leaders co-create visions with their community. And one of the questions I asked him was about that vision that too often administrators and leaders go into a new community and they have a very specific vision that they want implemented, but they don't know the people they serve. They don't know the resources they have. The best visions and the ones that are most likely to come to fruition are the ones that we create together based on the talent that we actually have in front of us. And he did a wonderful job talking about this, giving some great examples. We did talk a little bit about sports because he's a Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan, and so am I. So it was a really great podcast. I really enjoyed talking to him. I know you're going to learn a lot. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Hey everyone, this is George Coase. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I am so blessed to have Dr. Keith Simmons on the podcast today. He is currently the superintendent. Is that, do you go by superintendent? I know you said CEO. Is it like, is it switch? It really just depends. So whatever so the mood is. It's the, it's the function. The function right. is the CEO. The title is superintendent. The work is just be on the team. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And you have an superintendent Griffin Spalding County Schools. And as you mentioned, I met with a lot of your team and they are absolutely wonderful people. And they talk very highly of you, even though you're a Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan in Georgia. So that must, that says something about you. Cause you're already starting a deficit with probably a bunch absolutely. of them, right? Absolutely. <laughs> hey, you know, around here, when I say rise up, people think that I'm talking about the fan. I mean, the Falcons, but I'm talking about right. is raise the flag. I say, rise up. <laughs> right. raise the flag. I love it. I love it. All right. Fire those cannons. <laughs> Yeah, the cannons freak me out, by the way. Uh, like, why do they keep throwing the cannons? They someone should have warned you. Yeah, they, my, it freaked my daughter out. We were like, why do they keep doing the cannons? They're like, oh, and they're in the red zone. I'm like, That's okay, right. so I'm getting ready That's next right. time because every Absolutely. time it was a little bit nervous, nerve wracking. All right. So Dr. Simmons is actually currently, as I mentioned, superintendent, but he's done a ton of different roles, but I'm not going to explain that to you. If you can just share a little bit about who you are, what you do today and how you got there, I think it's a really great place to start. Sure, sure, sure. So like like George said, my name is Keith Simmons. I currently serve as superintendent. Uh, prior to becoming superintendent, I've served at the district office level as a chief of staff, uh, where I supported, you know, the superintendent and, and eight other assistant superintendents. I uh, served as a high school principal, which I believe was the absolute best job I've ever had. And when I grow up, I'm going to go back to being a high school principal. Uh, I've been a special education teacher. I've been a, a dean of students. I've been an athletics coach. Uh, but what I'd like to think is uh, overall, the, over the last 29 years, I've tried to just be an effective educator. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that, like, it, there is, that's one thing I really noticed about you when you were talking is that um, I know you and i'm making an assumption here you have to deal with the political stuff right as a superintendent there, there's always that reality but i found that you are really embracing and modeling how you were as a learner and i i i'm not gonna lie i've seen a lot of superintendents they lose outside and it's like how can you effectively lead a organization that's focused on learning if you don't actually continuously learn and grow and educate yourself and i am curious about this 
And, you know, with, with all the shortages and admin position, teacher position, maybe you'll be super <laughs> high school principal at the same time, <laughs> right? Maybe, get, maybe you have to do both, right? So why did you love being a high school principal so much? Because you got the best of both worlds. So as, as a district office administrator, you know, the, the ability to build relationships or sustain relationships with students is harder because there are so many people between you and them. Uh, but at the same time, the ability to, to coach and, and build capacity of adults uh, in leadership roles, that's fulfilling. But as a high school principal, you're, you're on one campus and you're doing both. And, sure. and I preferred the high school, uh, mostly because that's when I began to realize school was harder than I had given it credit to be. Uh, it required more support from, from folks, uh, and they probably did more pushing than I did. Um, and I found my niche at the high school level with adolescents. Um, you know, I, as a sports fan, you get all of the sports. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, you get the pep rallies. And so for me, um, it, yeah, it's just a, it, it's a, it's a great environment. You know, you get to work with scholars, you get to work with adults all in the same day. And if you're lucky, uh, your athletic teams, your, your arts, all of those things, you know, you throw that in there and you got a tremendous recipe for success. You know, we were talking about this. Um, I, we went to a UCF basketball game, uh, a friend of mine, and I, I've never been to, like, I've been to like the NCAA tournament. I've never been to like a college um, a basketball game at the college. And it was just so different than anything I ever experienced in Canada. Right. Uh, it was really something. And it's the same with high school athletics. Some of the high school football stadiums I've seen are way nicer than the university stadiums in Canada, which is just amazing to me. And that cultural, uh, aspect of it is really, really powerful. I I'm going to, I'm going to make an assumption. I'm going to say if this is a little bit true. You mentioned that you kind of, you know, you cause, could cause a little trouble. And I feel like as a high school principal, I'm guessing you kind of like the kids that did some of that stuff too. Is that fair to say? Like, it's kind of like you have to, I remember when kids used to get sent to my office and I'm like, is that all you did? Like, oh, I was way worse when I was a kid. Yeah, exactly. You know I mean? Is that like, was that a little bit for you too? It's like someone, you were the guide that for kids that someone was the guide for you. Like, was there that part of it too? There was, and, and there was a certain energy that, that came with, hmm. you know, working with students who I, I coined frequent flyers. <laughs> frequent right. flyers to the principal's office or frequent flyers to the assistant principal's office. Um, and, and truth be told, I enjoyed uh, being able to share commonality. Right. Because oftentimes, you know, when, when you wear a shirt and tie to work and you're dealing with kids who may be in sweats and tees, and they they often struggle with the notion that you've, quote unquote, walked a mile in their shoes. Right. But when you can talk to them about how you did the exact same things to, to get on that teacher's last nerve, mm -hmm. and then it was that teacher that you needed to, to, you know, provide you with one extra credit assignment to get the passing grade. Um, be careful about when you make those withdrawals and deposits. And so I had a blast working with, uh, you know, what I, what I called our frequent flyers. Hmm. Um, and and I'd, I'd love to be able to give a shout out to all of my teachers because I know uh, it, it is <laughs> their shoulders right, that I'm right. still standing on because they had ample opportunities to kick me to the side because, yeah, I was a, I was a bit of a mischievous child, but uh, I, I figured out how to just get right to the edge. Right. Yeah. And that, you know, that, that to me, what you said was really, really important. I think that sometimes, you know, uh, students see us where we are today and they feel there's no way we could ever experience what they did, but kind of sharing some of those insights, sharing some of those things that we struggle with That's right. creates a connection. And then you're, you're more open to listening to you, yeah. right? Cause they're like, oh, okay. Yeah. So it's not just me. And, and maybe there's some hope, right? If this exactly. guy did, okay, he'll, maybe I'll be fine too. So yeah, I've got, a, I've got a chance. I've got yeah. a shot. I love it. I love it. So it, we actually, I I'm curious about this. Um, and this is probably a selfish question to ask. Uh, my friend, Allison and apps and I, we just, we just finished a book called what makes a great principal. And, um, we, we identified five pillars and we also asked teachers and students to contribute to the book. So it's not like a top down, uh, book. It's more of a bottom up. Like what, okay. what did teachers say? Uh, but I'm curious if, if I was to say to you, like, what's, when you think of like one or two things that make a great principal and I, and maybe I'm outing a little trade secret here. 
there's when you are you notice things about principals that you didn't notice when you're a superintendent when you're working side by side with other principals right it's the same thing with teachers right you're like oh i didn't know teach some teachers are doing that when you become a principal and then when you go to the central office you're like oh seriously some principals do that right so like you've worked at different levels yeah. you know as a teacher you worked as a principal, you were a superintendent. So when you think of like, what really makes a great principal is like, what, what are one or two things that kind of stick out to you? Um, good principals are, are mindful of, they're mindful of the environment and the people uh, that are within that ecosystem. Mm -hmm. um, and, and what I mean by that is good principals, um, they, they have a, um, they have a knack for creating the conditions for the environment to thrive. Mm -hmm. But, but but that thriving environment is premised around the inhibited. So so um, good principles take what they have and create optimal conditions mm -hmm. so that that environment thrives. They they don't try and create a facade based on something that they've read or heard or that they envisioned somewhere else. They 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 leverage the strengths of the inhibitants. Mm -hmm. They leverage the resources that they're provided with, and they and they maximize the two of those, creating that confluence. Um, I think another trait of good principles is that um, they find balance in listening to to, to learn and listening yep. to understand, but they also are able to reflect and recognize their role. You know, so when 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 the environment is not thriving, what might they do differently in conjunction with the inhibitants as opposed to deflecting, you know, because you you I'm sure have been told or have heard it all rises and falls with leadership. Mm -hmm. the, the through line. It, it, so so a good principal understands that uh, and embraces it. You know, you you don't you don't necessarily make excuses. You may not be satisfied with what you have or, or where you are, but you don't become content mm -hmm. or complacent in that regard. You you find a way to improve. Yeah. Oh, so I know sports reference, Bill Belichick. I was listening to Bill Simmons, and they said the thing that was really fascinating about Bill Sim Bill Belichick. And now he always had Tom Brady, right? So That's true. there's always like a little like was he as good a coach? Is that he never had a system. He tried to understand who he had, and then he and he he always leveraged those people. So that was like something, and that's like a really hard thing to do. Where you try to like a lot of the coaches are like, "This is our system. You have to fit into it." Not really understanding who they have. And I, I, your answer makes me feel really validated because one of the things we talked about was that a great principal has to be visionary, and the thing that I, we actually left it as the, the final pillar. And the reason we did that very explicitly is said, you cannot come into a new school and have a vision before you actually meet the people you're working with and who you serve and know your resources and what you actually have access to. And the vision shouldn't be dependent upon what one person because is implementing. It should be something that's created together. And that, so like a lot of times we want, we say we want these visionary leaders who go in, have a vision for what they want, but then they don't know who they serve. And so that was why it was explicitly less. I, I saw, I don't know if you got a comment on that. Cause I saw you're like pretty excited. I, I felt really validated with just your expression when I said it, that made me feel really Absolutely. good. Well, you know, because too, too often, you know, even as superintendents, uh, you know, we espouse that when we're looking for principles, we want a visionary leader. Yeah. Um, and, and we give that person the impression that that it's incumbent upon them to go forth and cast said vision and, and life just magically happens on that campus. Yeah. And then they come back to our office and explain how nothing is going the way they, quote unquote, envisioned it. Right. <laughs> and it's because their vision only included their perspective. Right. And, and, and so when you when you say that, um, you know, as a, as a district level leader, we have to be mindful and, and be careful about the things that we say and, and how we expect those things uh, to be operationalized. Um, but, but like you mentioned, good principles understand you are just that. 
Mm -hmm. you, you don't teach all of the curriculum. <laughs> you don't attend all of the classrooms. Uh, you, you know, you don't you don't make all of the decisions. And so you have to bring those people to the table mm -hmm. and you have to ensure that what you see is a part of what they see and vice versa. And then you collectively co-create, you know, this ecosystem that allows that environment to thrive. And, and what I will tell you, go to any school that's considered to be a great school hmm. in any circumstance, any city or state, despite all of the other things that pundits may talk to you about. And they'll tell you that their principal gets it and them. Right. And that's where it starts. So you'll, I think you'll, you'll like this analogy. I don't know if I mentioned this. I, I've, I know we're, I know I'm, I hate bringing up sports, but it's just, I know, I see a lot of things through that light. Um, I ref basketball, really high level basketball for a long time. And the thing, a great principal and a great referee, you don't notice them. That's what makes them typically what makes them great. That's if you right. keep noticing them, something's going wrong, right? If you keep oh. yelling at the ref, yeah. <laughs> the, ref's, the ref's not good. Right. Yeah, not good. Right. So it's the games that you don't notice the ref. And I, I feel there's, there's some connection there too, is that they, they put people in the position to play the game to the best of their abilities Correct. and, and, and they kind of lead that too. Right. But sometimes the, the ref's got to step in. Sometimes the principal's got to step in. Right. And, and make sure things are, you know, kind of going the way, but I, I, I always think about that about how kind of, you know, when you're yelling at the ref, it's like, oh, that's not a good ref, right? If you keep yeah. noticing what's going on with them, right? So um, tell us a little bit about the year with Griffin Spalding. Like what's been some of the, the best things that have happened? Like what's something that you're really proud of that, you know, your people have done, something that you've created, anything when you think of? I, I, to be honest, yeah, I, I'm being selfish again. I just kind of like to hear about it because I just so many really wonderful people that yeah. Well, I, I appreciate it. So I, I'll start with, um, you know, in Griffin Spalding, we we set out, we strive to ensure that all of our students are able to read, write, speak, and solve grade level text and material in every classroom. With, with that as the backdrop, I'm excited about um, our student support division. You know, they, they were just given the award to be uh, top district in the state of Georgia for innovative practices in supporting students, you know, both academically and social emotionally. Mm -hmm. uh, and what that means is that we're willing, we're willing to try and try again for students and staff. You know, um, that that's not to say that we have all of the answers. That's simply to say that when we don't have an answer, we're going to try and find one. And the things that we're trying to implement has been working for our people. Um, another exciting thing I learned last night, there's a program that's called Read for America. Uh, and basically what we're trying to do is advocate and promote reading for early learners. Uh, and our school district won this contest for having the most adults read to students in a given yes. uh, and So, But it speaks to the things that we stand on, reading, writing, speaking, and solving. Um, uh, so, some other, you know, phenomenal things of, you know, we, we were one district who had multiple elementary schools, uh, with double digit gains and, and reading scores. And so you, you're seeing a trend here. Um, we recognize that we may not always have the answer, but we, but there's nothing that prevents us from seeking said answer, uh, mm -hmm. and everything that we strive to do, we strive to do for the betterment of our folks. Uh, I, I can't, I can't even, now I can't remember all the good that we've done, but mm -hmm. what I'll tell you is the credit uh, is, is deserved by the adults and the students. I just happen to get to tell you about it. Um, good referee, good referee, good referee, good referee. <laughs> exactly. My, my job is to make sure that my folks know the rules of the game uh, yeah. and prepare them via practice for the competition. So you did something um, that I do now that I didn't do before. And, and I want to make it really explicit for people listening. Um, so you talked about innovation, you talked about innovative practices, which I always did. It's the first part I used to not do, right? So the focus on reading and writing the, the basic skills that we need to develop in our kids. And the, and I'm not saying that I didn't focus on those things, but I assumed that we just, everyone knew that's what we were doing. 
And I think a lot of times in education, we talk about innovative practices, we talk about really moving forward. And then it actually gets a lot of our community frustrated because they're like, what about reading and writing? What about the basics? What about these things? And it took me a while to kind of figure that out. No, 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 of course we're doing those things, right? But to be really explicit about we're doing those things to be able to get to a point of innovation. We're just saying, um, and I, I've shared this quote a million times. It's a gentleman named Yang Zhao. He said something, I, I've never, I don't know if he wrote it, but I saw him say it and I never take credit for it. He said, reading and writing should be the floor, not the ceiling. And sure. that really hit me when I heard that because it's like, we have to really kind of ensure that every kid has some basic skills and then we do the innovation, but we also have to be explicit with our community that these are the things that we're doing to kind of set that base foundation and, and, and move forward. So I think that was kind of a masterclass that you just did with everybody. I just wanted to, I wanted to break down the tape for you. I just wanted to do that go back. Cause I think that that's a really important, um, thing that we kind of, we kind of, I'll be honest with you, I see it left out that people talk about the, the ceiling, but not the, the floor that's being built. Well, well, to, you know, so what I'll share with you, George, is when I became superintendent here almost three years ago, um, I, I wanted to co-create a vision that would anchor the work. And, you know, I, our vision is to develop a distinctive brand, you know, mm -hmm. develop strong leaders and operate great schools. Um, and, and all of us have a role in that, you know, but if, if we're not able to posture reading, writing, speaking, and solving, if I can't have leaders who understand how to problem solve, right. uh, who, who understand how to identify problems, uh, then we're going to struggle, you know, at, at the school. Same thing for our students, same thing for our staff. And so what we're starting to see now are the benefits of, of a mindset, if you would. But but we believe that, you know, we improve our reading through writing. We improve our writing through speaking. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to afford those opportunities to our students and our staff as best we can every day in every classroom. I love it. I love it. All right. So we're, we're getting to the end of the podcast. And mm -hmm. this is when people typically, you know, if they've lasted this long, they, you know, they're like both of us. But <laughs> I'm doing the sports question. Here it comes. Let's do it. So th it is. January 16th, we're recording this, but this is not being published for a while. Okay. So, so right now I'm going to call you out and see what you do here. All right. We got Tampa Bay, Green Bay, Detroit, San Francisco in the NFC. Still, we got Kansas city, Buffalo. Uh, who else do we got? Kansas city, Buffalo, Baltimore and, uh, Baltimore and Houston, Houston, Houston. Who's, who's, who's going to the super bowl? Who's winning? And you're, this is going to be right before the Super Bowl, so we're going to see how good you are at this. So, are you going to go with your team? Is that who you really think is going to win? Or who you, who you got? Let's see what you got. Who's going, and then who's going to win? So, <laughs> we're going to see how good you are at this. If you do this, you, this is going to be. If you get it, you're going to like the superintendent's done. You're just going to be doing gambling shows. As much as as much as I'd like, I don't know. I don't know that we will have enough to to beat Detroit. I I, I don't know. I don't know that we'll have enough to beat Detroit. I, I really and and the fact that we've eliminated the Eagles yep. that was half of my Super Bowl. Uh, that was half of my Super Bowl game right there. Yep. The fact that we've eliminated the Eagles. It's really a toss up. It, I mean, it really is a toss up, but I still believe in San Francisco. San Francisco is going against who? We got on the other side. If I say the Bucks, it'll, it'll be perceived because I'm a Bucks fan. Well, they can't go. San Francisco's in San, NFC. No, so San Francisco yeah. and who's on the AFC side? Who you got on the AFC well, side? Well, I'm I'm going to go I'm going to go with Baltimore. Okay. Um, I'm going to go with Baltimore. I'm going to go with Baltimore, but I, I I really, I really want the Bucks. <laughs> Me too. San Francisco and, and and the Ravens. All right, so here's mine. Let's see if I'm going. I'm going Buffalo. Very, you like Buffalo? Oh no! I, I like I like Buffalo. Buffalo, you're going. 
<laughs> it's their year because no one because they kind of are coming out of nowhere. It's the years that they're expected to win. And that's when they lose. When they don't, so it's going to be Buffalo, and it's going to be San Francisco, and Buffalo is going to win. Call. Uh, I'm going to say it's going to be Baltimore, and it's going to be San Francisco, <laughs> and Baltimore will win again. All right, you know what I'm going to do later as this gets closer. I'm going to just co- cover over mine to be right. I'm going to just change the voice. I'm going to double okay. the top. So, so let me go ahead and do my part now. <laughs> you can nope. just, you can just. Nope. Yours is dead. Yours is dead. <laughs> Mine's going to be right. Well, you know, I mean, with, with, with the, with the Harbaugh's, you know, you know, yeah. you know, both of them will be back in the NFL, you know, yeah. next year this time anyways. All right. Uh, All right. Oh, well. All right, man. So we're, but we're still hoping Tampa Green Bay game that'll be in Tampa. So I hope that happens and we'll, we'll be going to that one. So listen, if if that happens, yeah. if if we beat Detroit this the Green week, Bay wins. It, well, see, I, I'm not even worried about it. <laughs> but if we beat Detroit, we we will beat San Francisco. All right, let's go. Let's do it. All right. So you got the predictions. You got some great content. Dr. Simmons, it was awesome hanging out with you. We got to do this more. Let's do it. Yeah, when, all right. Whenever you, whenever you have a slot that, that's free, I uh, love it. let me know, and, and, and I'd love to hang I'm out. I'm telling you, we're doing a podcast drive in <laughs> Tampa, Green Bay. I'm calling it. I'm, I'm really crossing my fingers for that drive. That's the Let's only time it. I've ever liked that drive. So thanks, everyone, for listening. Dr. Simmons, thanks for being on. And everyone, Griffin Spall, thanks, everyone. Hope you're having a great year. Thanks for all you do. Everyone have a great day. Take care. Appreciate it.